Let's start closing. If you made any pictures, you want us to see them also, send them to pix at hashdays.ch. Any pictures you don't want us to see, just do whatever you want with it. Or <laughs> send them anyway. Put them on Facebook. No, Instagram. Instagram is the word. Um, at this stage, I would like to thank our team, the Hashdays team, as I did before. We're working really, really hard for a year now for this conference, all in the yellow shirts during the year. Additionally, all those guys in the blue shirts during the conference, give them, please, a big hand for this. As you might have seen, the room back there, the network operation center, office, whatever um, office this might be, we were working very, very hard. And sometimes uh, funny things happen. We are working really, really hard there. Just watch. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much for this insight. I think the running gag just changed by this year. <laughs> Something else I did not want to forget, or I do not want to forget, is of course the sponsors. This time I won't comment it. Gold sponsors. Silver sponsors, without the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do this. And without you, of course, neither. Also here, a big hand for the sponsors. <laughs> and I, get I hand over to Candid. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So I'm going to go a little bit over the different contests that we run during the con. So first, starting off with the puzzle challenge. Um, Quite a few actually participated, which is great. Um, giving everything uh, there, won't mention them, but uh, we go into some of the details there. So all of you who received the badge probably or maybe not recognize that if you look at the small yellow LED, just about the pin 13, if you reset the badge or replug the battery, it would actually kind of flash a little bit, which looked like Morse code. I know it was pretty fast, but um, well, we had the ham radio guys, um, and some took actually video um, of the whole thing and tried to play it back slowly, which didn't work. But um, you should have got something like MVLED67, which means move the LED to pin 67. And if you do that, you actually get another flashing, so another Morse code, which says serial monitor. And no, someone came up and kind of got the idea of I have to check a serial number at a monitor, which is standing somewhere here. No, that was not the clue. It was a funny one, though. But it's the serial monitor. If you connect it through USB in the Arduino, you actually get some information back. And the trick here was that you actually had to keep the LED plugged into pin 6 and 7. Otherwise, you wouldn't get anything. So keep it in there. It's checking for it. Otherwise, you just get kind of a randomization number, uh, which didn't really help you much. So next up thing that you actually get through the serial monitor, kind of this. So there's the randomness, uh, which I said. And then you got this, uh, which says, kind of, following the right white rabbit, keep on. Sorry, there was no white space left for encoding. And some might have noticed, if you select it, there's a huge line there. Uh, many missed it. And I mean, white space should have given you the clue that white space, as in space and tabs. Um, so use them. Obviously, some try white space as programming language, which is nice as well, but it doesn't compile. Uh, and no, the challenge was not fixing it to get it compile. Uh, but <laughs> thanks for trying anyway. Um, so it was just simply converting it to zeros and one. Uh, you had to choose which one, obviously, for tabs or space. Binary to ASCII, not too difficult. And you should get the reading the stars with paper marks. Yes, I know it's. A little bit cryptic, but that's the game of a puzzle on challenge. So what it meant was actually on your booklet, there were a few funny kind of hash signs, which were the same that you have on your batch. 
and um, also the markings, kind of the uh, circuit board markings. And if you look at your batch, um, there are two stars at the top. And yes, it said look in the stars and not between the stars. So it was not the hole between the two stars. So the idea was lining them up so the two hashes there and then look into the side of the stars and you get the letters. Unfortunately, yes, sorry for that, the printing actually scaled wrong, so they actually inflated a little bit, so the scaling was a little bit off, but you could still guess it, I would accept if the answer was actually in between the fuse that we saw, which should lead you to SCHH. And since it's, at, it's a six-letter word, uh, people just added random stuff that they kind of aligned with it, uh, but no, that was not the clue. And all of you should have seen, I mean, very prominent in the booklet, the two uh, side three and four, which has a lot of zero and ones. Um, the tip I gave to a few of you were close your eyes and you might be able to read it um, because it was Braille. So um, obviously I couldn't make it really feelable uh, for blind people uh, or you. Uh, but translate it and you get something like in the final solution of the batch puzzle replace all the H with FFs which obviously from SCHH turns you to SCFFFF which is random as random as anything else right even if it doesn't look like so that's the final solution um, which we received actually only twice so only two teams uh, were able to finish off with the right solution. Um, I have to give extra credits to uh, Frank Burnt for the extra, extra effort that they put into actually crypto analysis, that one here. So um, I gave them one letter, which was the I at the beginning, and they kind of did a known plain test text attack on the whole thing and actually managed to break it in the end without even realizing that it's the Braille font. Uh, so, uh -huh. But unfortunately, they only came in second because the winner was, and still is, Ben April. Please come up and collect your prize. Thank you. So it's a 50 euro voucher code for Amazon. So moving on to the next context that we had, which was the batch hacking contest. Um, we're really pleased that we actually had um, a few people which attended the workshop, or some didn't, play with the batch, extending it. Um, we expected more Pong or other games, but um, you came up with some interesting and funny ideas. So the nominees for the hacking contests are the RFID reader batch, um, quote, still variable. Um, <laughs> I think it's about one and a half kilogram. Um, I think he's not wearing it at the moment. Um, but nice try, so um, extending it with the RFID reader, as the name implies. Uh, second entry came from Ben as well. Um, made a magic eight ball, so you shake it, ask a question like, will Pascal be giving the closing ceremony? And it says, most likely yes. So it actually predicted it correct. I don't know how he did it, but I uh, managed to do that. Uh, we had Max giving in the uh, NR NRF um, Final for Wireless Keyboards. So pretty nice networking device for not only keyboard, but everything else to kind of transmit the, the same um, frequency and uh, protocol. So you just place it there, it will sniff it, and we'll actually be able to get the secret, um, which is kind of a pre-shared secret, and then you can read all the keystrokes from the wireless keyboards. Next nominee is the Attention Hungry Bastard, uh, made by Rolf. Um, it's kind of a Tamagotchi, uh, so kind of old school. Has a little smiley up there, uh, which you see, and a few RGB uh, fading LEDs. Um, if you're not paying too much attention to it, it actually will have a sad smiley face. Sort of kind of uh, getting uh, more and more um, kind of slow with the fading, not doing much. And there's a sensor, so if you go close and actually wave at it and move something, give some attention, it will actually start smiling again and kind of be very excited and flash a few of the LEDs with different colors. 
So that's your uh, Tamagotchi badge. Next one is the Quasselstrippe. Um, going to the same direction, so you got two of the rolling eyes and the mouth, which had a few animations going th uh, through the different months. So a nice one as well. And the one we all expected uh, to get uh, would be the alcohol breath analyzer. Um, so you push the button, you blow into the badge, and we'll actually well, get you some reading back. Unfortunately, um, he wasn't able to get it calibrated. Um, couldn't find enough people yesterday, probably. Um, <laughs> at least not sober enough to get a zero value. Um, but theoretically, it should work, right? And then we had the uh, light detector for a uh, lazy crocodile. So if there is too much light, the crocodile would actually not come out. Uh, if you kind of put a little hand over it to, to make shadow, the crocodile, which you see there, which will be animated, comes out and, um, well, shows its face. And the last entry was uh, an electronic uh, bubble level uh, kind of uh, scale. So you put it there, it has a few uh, sensors. If you tilt it, the thing will actually kind of move to the, the side. And if it hits the side, so if you really tilt it to an angle, it will beep. So that's another way you can use your badge. So those are the eight uh, nominees. And we had a pretty rough fight, uh, could nearly say there, to say who's the winner or not. We all liked them. Um, we definitely liked that you actually played with the badge, so that shows that we are on the right track to make something easy, accessible for you guys to extend it. The Arduino workshop where Jan did a very good job and I think it's deserving an applause there as well. <laughs> so we kind of made an agreement in the end that on third place there's the RFID reader badge. Please come up and collect your prize. So that's actually the colored TFT shield with a joystick and a book. On second place, it's the electronic bubble uh, level, so the scale, which is the LCD shield with RGB and the book as well. Please come up and collect your prize. And on first place, it's the attention-hungry bastard, so it's the Tamagotchi. So please come up. There you see, it's smiling at the moment. So it's a Raspberry Pi and the book to get it started. And we're so glad you didn't put in a piezo, a piezo or any kind of noise-making device, because <laughs> that probably would be awful, right? It's smiling, yeah. <laughs> so last but not least, um, feedback forms. So we have the raffle there as well. Uh, we got three prizes, three times a 50 euro uh, voucher code for Amazon as well. If you haven't given in your feedback form now, it's too late for the raffle. But you can still bring it afterwards because we love your feedback. That's yeah, and I think before we close, uh, Stefan has Quick one. final words. Um, over the course of those couple of days, uh, I know we have an open bar and things happen, so I have a South African GoTran gold card. <laughs> 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 Fuck you guys. <laughs> uh, if you know a, the serial number, there's a card it. number uh, on it. Uh, if you miss this, if you, if you see this on YouTube and it's yours, <laughs> If this is yours, call us, okay? Uh, also, um, we got a one gig micro SD card. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, 2007 will call and claim it because it's only one gig, but uh, if this is yours... Uh, we didn't find any nice pictures on it. Yeah, I was going so. to say that we would just paste everything on pasting if you don't claim it by the end of this ceremony. That um, would be all. So um, these are the only lost and found items beneath uh, different like 
various lost livers. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Okay, so with all any further ado, thanks for coming here. Have a safe trip home, and hopefully, see you next year. Thank you.